Hi everyone. Today we're going to start uh, looking at the introductory material to the class uh, and try to get a handle on what is economics and uh, what is environmental and resource economics in particular. Okay, economics, in my mind, is the study of trade-offs. Okay, we can embody this concept most clearly in the basic statement that there is no free lunch. Okay, so what this means is Everything in the world involves give and take. We have to give up something to get something else. And you will see this evaluated more formally as we always look at the costs of a choice and the benefits of that choice. Okay? Some of these things are very simple. Okay, so if we look at if we look at a private purchase decision, these trade-offs are very simple. Okay? The cost is simply the money you pay. And the benefit is whatever value, value slash happiness, etc., that you get from the product. Okay, this value can be something fleeting and simple. Uh, it can be something that maybe you wouldn't think of as value. It could be food to survive. It could be essential medicine to survive. Okay? But it could also be not that serious. It could be uh, something you're just buying to enjoy. Maybe um, you're buying a song on iTunes uh, or you're buying yourself um, a new tablet or an Apple TV or something like that. So it doesn't necessarily need to be uh, serious and high stakes for this analysis uh, to be valid. And the most critical point, which um, is well beyond the scope of this class, is that in that cost, in that money that you pay, embedded there is also um, the loss of that money to spend on something else, right? You can only spend your money once. So if you take more and more economics classes and you get into uh, graduate study, there will actually be a concept called general equilibrium in which we try to evaluate um, how you allocate your spending among different products uh, subject to a budget constraint. Uh, we are not going to do that in this class. Okay, so, but we look at two, two classes of decisions that are very important. So there are private decisions, okay, private decisions might be, for example, whether or not to buy a pack of cigarettes. Okay, but we also are going to look in this class at public decisions. And public decisions involve looking at the organized behavior of people in markets and they look at the role of government 
uh, in terms of setting the rules of the game. So the public decision might be whether slash how much to tax cigarettes. Okay, so let's look at the private decision first. The private decision, we have costs and benefits. Right? What are the costs of smoking? Okay, we have the dollars, right, to purchase. You have to pay for the cigarettes. Cigarettes are expensive these days. Okay. And presumably, you may have some small amount per cigarette of uh, long term health costs. Okay, and there may be other factors depending on your private uh, behavior um, as a smoker. So there may also be uh, costs imposed on others. Uh, maybe other people don't want to smell the cigarette smoke. Maybe, um, maybe you throw the cigarette butts on the ground in a, in a public place, etc. Okay, so those are the those are the costs. We're going to treat these special costs, by the way, these costs imposed on others. Okay, these are going to be uh, something called externalities, which we'll talk about in modules six and seven in more detail. Okay. What about your benefits? Well, presumably, you get some short-term enjoyment uh, out of the the cigarettes themselves. Uh, maybe you, you know, or stress relief maybe would be another example of why people smoke. Or, at least according to the marketing they used to do before it was banned, uh, maybe you will just look cool amongst your peers. Something like that. Okay? But we're not going to get into making any judgments here about why people do certain things. Uh, obviously, or you're just addicted is, is another uh, pretty clear one. But we're not going to get into here into judging why people do things, and we're not going to not going to litigate whether this is the right choice or the wrong choice or whatever. Um, instead, what we're trying to do is we're trying to understand the structure. We're trying to understand how does the decision get made. That's what we're studying in economics. How does the decision get made? Okay, so we have a set of costs, we have a set of benefits, and we can try to think about a person's value proposition according to, to these basic points, but we do also have to consider that people may not be considering all of these, right? So they're definitely considering the dollars. They have to pay the dollars right away. It's, it's, it's immediate and it's salient, right? Are they necessarily thinking about others? We don't know. Are they necessarily thinking about long-term health costs? We don't know. So these two may not be considered by cigarette buyers. Okay. And this is, I bring this up because there is a long history in economics of assuming that people are rational and people know their values that they place on things and they know the consequences of their actions and they're able to evaluate those consequences and potentially change their demand for a product if they see that that product might harm them. Okay, that's not always true. 
Okay, but I'm just going to note it here for you because we're going to come back to it. So, but I, all I wanted to say was, is that this can violate our uh, what we call a rationality assumption in economics. Okay, so we assume that people are rational. The rationality assumption is really just uh, one way of restricting the choices that people make so that the math works, uh, which we'll get into a little bit later. Okay, but for now I just want to give you this vocabulary term, rationality assumption, and we'll come back to what that means. Okay, for now you can think of it as uh, the assumption that uh, people know their values and they know the trade-offs that they face and they account for them. Okay.